Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me. Somehow or other, I messed up my little overlay timer. <laughs> so let me know in the chat, Laura. Okay, great, I see you there. You said you can see me. Can you guys hear me? I'm trying something new with my microphone today. So that way I don't have it clipped on my shirt. So let me know if you can hear me. coffee. Well, I'm going to assume you guys can hear me. How is everyone? Excited to be back here doing another live. Um, I have some fun things to go over with you guys today with Glitz Glitter Gel, if you're familiar with that product. Uh, and hopefully we're getting lots of delivery drivers because it's the season for packages. And so hopefully we don't get any during the live because my um, dog will go crazy. So <laughs> if he does, we'll, we'll take a short break so I can calm him down. But I think um, we'll probably be okay. Hi, Diane. You can hear me? Great. Wonderful. Well, I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving that celebrated. My last live was just before Thanksgiving. Um, that was a lot of fun. So I've been trying to think about what I wanted to do for the next one. And I decided to play with the Glitz Glitter Gel today. And we're gonna do a couple of fun different things. I'm gonna give a couple more minutes for people to get on here. Um, but definitely, if you have questions, put them in the comments. If you have comments, put them in the comments, you know, about anything I'm doing. I love to hear from you guys. It makes it a lot more interactive. So definitely, please comment away. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and I am going to switch my camera over so that you guys can see my desk. Here we go. And if you guys watched my last video, I did a really fun stencil outline technique using this stencil. So if you haven't seen that, I definitely recommend watching that. It was um, kind of a cool thing. I haven't seen anyone else do that, so I was excited to give that a try. There goes my dog. I knew that might happen. Um, <laughs> so today, though, we're going to use it with the Glitz Glitter Gel over um, some ink blending and all kinds of different fun stuff like that. So I'm going to start off with an A2 sized panel, four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to do it on the horizontal and I'm just going to put a couple of ornaments on here, ink blended ornaments. I'm using Concord and Ninth ink today. This is Sprout, and then I'm just using the domed foam dauber. And if at any point you guys can't hear me, let me know. But I'm just coming in, and when you're doing this, oops, first of all, make sure you're holding your stencil down well and not paying attention to your dog. Well, hold your stencil down. You can also tape it, but just come in fairly light at first. You can always build up ink. It's much harder to take it away. You don't need much for these tiny little ornament pieces. So I'm gonna do three in the green, and then I'm gonna do two in the blue, and then we are gonna play with the glitter gel. Is everybody getting ready? for the holidays. I know we are. Every year I say I'm going to get everything done in advance and every year I still have a million things to do. You would think I'd learn, but I have not learned to date. We bought a new tree this year and it is up in the living room. It's really pretty. 
but um, I don't have it decorated yet. And our old tree, I actually put in my crafting space. So it's actually all decorated. So at least I get to see fun decorations. So that was Sprout. And I'm gonna come in with some Aqua Sky. to do some small ornaments. Again, you don't need very much. I just kind of dab into the ink. And just be careful when you have small stencils like this that you're not going over into the other spaces because you'll get the ink down on your panel. So like here and here. You can always mask those with post-it tape or masking paper if you're worried about that. I like to live dangerously though. So you can see the buildup of the ink. You can make these as light or as dark as you want. You can add shading if you use a small detail kind of brush or, or dauber. All right, so we've got our little ornaments there. I'm gonna set this ink aside. Hi, Ashley. I see you said boy, FYI. I'm not sure what that means. Can you not hear me maybe? I'm not sure. Let me know. Okay, all right, I'm gonna come in and now we're gonna do some fun stuff. Here's the Glitz Glitter Gel. Now, I have had this for a little while and a good tip is to use Saran Wrap so that it'll stay moist and not dry out on you when you're not using it, at least not as quickly anyway. And I have a little palette knife. You're gonna to wanna to use that. And for what I'm doing, I just am using a small little acrylic piece, an acrylic block. You could use a craft mat or whatever you have. I like this and you're gonna see why because I can kind of hold it in my hand when I'm doing what I'm gonna do. So. What I'm using here is alcohol ink, and this color is gumball. And I'm just gonna take a drop of this alcohol ink. I'm gonna drop it on there, just one. You don't need a lot. And then I'm gonna take some of my Glitz Glitter Gel, and this is in white. You need the white to do this kind of trick. I'm just gonna get a little bit on there and I'm going to mix it with the alcohol ink to create the color that I want. This opens up a ton of possibilities with your glitter gel if you have alcohol inks. You can also do this with spray stain, which when I'm done, if I remember, I will show you an example that I did with some spray stain. And you can do this with your ink re-inkers. I have not tried that, but in theory it should work. So here's the second piece of that stencil and I'm going to bring it in and I'm just gonna add some details here using the colored glitter gel. And you're gonna wanna put the first stencil down so you don't get the gel everywhere. You only want it to go inside the stenciled shape when you're doing this kind of technique. And then I'm going to just put a little bit, a little bit goes a long way. Just kind of dab it in there.
I do kind of a dab and then swipe is how I like to do it. And you just want to make sure it's nice and smooth all the way across there. And then you can peel up both pieces of your stencil and voila, you have a really cool colored glitter gel now, whatever color you want over your ink blended ornament. You can use a stamped image, you can use whatever you want. Now, you can wait until this is dry before you do the next one. It doesn't take too terribly long for it to get dry enough to do um, the next step, but I'm gonna go ahead and go in while it's wet still and just be very careful. I'm gonna kinda tilt my stencil up a little bit and just be careful to try and not smudge it around too badly anyway. And if I'm quiet, sorry, it's because I'm concentrating. I'm trying not to get a gel where it shouldn't go. <laughs> okay, I think that's pretty good and smooth. So I'm just going to peel that up. There we go. We've got our second ornament. And then we're going to do the third one. Now this glitz glitter gel, you don't want to leave it sitting on your stencils because it will harden and be very, very difficult to get off. What I suggest is when you're working with it is to have a little dish of soapy water um, next to your workspace, which is what I have today, or you can jump up and just kind of run to the sink and rinse it off. It doesn't dry, like it dries kind of medium fast, I guess, if that makes sense. So you have a little bit of time, but not, you can't just like leave it sitting there for an hour. Now, if you do get glitz glitter gel hardened and dried on something, spray it with some rubbing alcohol and let it kind of soak. So I'm gonna put that guy in my little dish of soap of water, soapy water, along with the palette knife over there. And you can see we've got these three fun pink lined ornaments now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna get up for just a second so I can wipe off my stencil and the water. So bear with me. Just scrubbing off my stencil. And I have like a little scrubby um, brush as well. That makes it really easy. And then when you're drying stencils, what I've started using is a towel that I have just am using to dry my stencils now. And it is a... Um, like a potato sack towel, I think is what they're called. They don't have the little fibers on them, so there's not as many little spots to catch on the stencil when you're drying it off. And it works so much better than trying to dry your stencil with a paper towel or with a regular towel. Um, I think it even works better than trying to dry it with the chamois. So I have dedicated this towel to just being for my stencils. Now I'm gonna just grab my palette knife, dry that guy off. And then I'm gonna come in with this other fun little detail here in white. And I'm gonna just put a little bit of the glitter glitz, glitz glitter gel on my palette knife and come in 
and put this on this guy. Just so again, you just want to make sure it's smooth. That's really the only thing. So there we go. And you can see because mine's not completely dry, I did get a little bit of the pink. I'm just going to kind of wipe that away there. Um, if you're doing two different colors like that and going to be moving on your stencil, you probably do want to wait until the first layer of glitter gel is actually dry. But we're live, so we're going to do things a little wild. Hi, Jean. Is it Jean or Jeannie? Glad you can see me and hear me. Welcome. I think it's probably Jean. Glad to have you here. Okay, so here is our card panel. Isn't that cute? And you can use all kinds of different colors. This, like I said, I use the gumball, but I think it would be really pretty to use other colors you could of alcohol ink that you have. And I mentioned you can also use spray stain. I wanna show you a version that I did. Here's this version. And in this version, instead of the drop of alcohol ink mixed in with the glitter gel, I used um, some of this Distress Mica Stain. And you can see it, it kind, kind of also changed the level of shininess, level of glitterness, because the mica flakes are in there. But this was fun too. So this is what it looks like dried. It dries back a fair bit. You can see between the two. But I love that ability to have pretty much any color of glitter gel that you want by using the alcohol ink. Jeannie. Okay, it's pronounced Jeannie. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Mary. Mary asked, how long does it take for the glitter gel to dry? Um, it, it's fairly dry to the touch after about, oh, I don't know, 30 minutes or so, but I wouldn't do anything crazy with it until it's had at least a couple hours to dry. This dried overnight, so you can see it's you know, perfectly fine. If I did that to this panel, it would smear all over the place right now. Um, so, you know, it, and it also depends too on how thick you have it on there and how much you have on there. It um, will dry a lot faster if you just have like these small spaces like this versus if you had a big giant thick stencil that you had it on. All right, so that is the first thing I wanted to show you guys. I thought that was really fun that you can color it with the alcohol inks. And here is one sample that I did last night because I just wanted to show you another color. Um, this was done with the Laguna. Isn't that pretty? Love it. Okay. So that was um, a technique that I wanted to try out because I wanted to see how many different color or ways to have different colors I could come up with. And what prompted me to try that was actually because I just recently got a fun set of mini glitz glitter gels from Simon Says Stamp. And these came in rainbow assortment. So you've got red, orange, yellowish gold, green, blue, and purple. And I thought, well, how are they coloring it? And so I played around with this a little bit. And these, the, the glitter in these is actually what's colored. Okay, it's not the um, kind of goop that's in there, it's the glitter. But because this glitz glitter gel in white is made with kind of this, um, somewhat translucent kind of opaque type of um, binder with the glitter, it will show up colored. And then the little flakes that are actually in there will still stay the silvery glitter color. So it just depends on what you're 
what look you're going for, but just keep in mind, this will have like little silver glimmers, but if you're gonna use any colored glitz, glitter gel that you purchase, it is going to um, show up as the glitter is the actual color of whatever the, the gel is. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so Mary asked, could you use a heat tool to hurry up the dry time? You can, um, I, for me, I don't think it's worthwhile to sit there with the heat tool because it's a little too long. Um, I'd rather just like set it aside and go do something else, but you can use a heat tool to hurry up the dry time, yes. All right, so now I wanna show you a really fun technique that I came up with last night that involves dry embossing with dyes and glitter gel. This is so cool. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do something like this. Um, certainly they could have, but I haven't seen it and it looks really, really pretty when it's all done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick a color here. The version I did last night, which I'll show you guys when I'm done, was in um, purple. So I think maybe I will do, let's do in blue and green. So you can also mix the colors and kind of do like a combined um, mix of colors, which is also really fun. So you can see I haven't even opened these guys yet. So I've got the blue. I've got the green. And when you're doing this, if you are gonna play with more than one color, just have a paper towel um, handy nearby so that you can kind of wipe your instruments off as you're working and you don't combine the glitter colors together. So I'm gonna use what's off of this lid, waste not, want not. And I'm gonna come in Try not to get this on my computer. <laughs> and I'm going to put a dollop of the green here. Okay. And then I'm gonna put a little dollop of the blue. I'm gonna close these up. And later I'll go back and I'll cut a little piece of saran wrap to put in there. And I'm just going to very thinly smooth these across the paper. And I'm not concerned if they mix, that's kind of the look I want. And you just wanna make sure that they are smooth when you're done. Okay, I think we're pretty good there. And what you're gonna do is you are gonna get a piece of cling wrap, saran wrap, whatever you have, whatever this clear kind of wrap you have is. Sorry about that, there's my dog again. And you wanna get a fairly good sized piece. And you're gonna set it down. And you're gonna put your piece here inside the cling wrap. And you do want to move fairly quickly on this because you want your glitter gel to stay wet. Now I'm gonna fold over the cling wrap. 
going to smooth it on there. And then I'm going to take whatever dye, and this one I am using um, the Memory Box Floral Chain Dye, and I will link, I think I already linked down below to all the supplies I'm using. And if I happen to use anything different than what I have on here, I will update that. And I'm just going to put that on there. And I'm gonna use a little piece of glitter tape to keep it in place. Or not glitter tape, purple tape. I've got glitter on the brain because we're using the glitter gel. And then I'm going to set this aside for a second so I can bring in my embossing or my die cutting machine because we're gonna do some embossing with it. Now I have the Platinum Spellbinder 6 um, and it came with this embossing plate and this tan embossing um, sheet. It's kind of rubbery and stretchy and I think most die cutting machines come with some version of this so if you have a different kind of die cutting machine, you're gonna to want to see what is recommended for this. So I'm just gonna set this down for my machine. It's the platform and then you put your, um, oh, I'm gonna flip it. You're supposed to put your cut, your die cut on the bottom, paper over. Then you put your stretchy mat and then your embossing plate, okay? And we're gonna run this through here. And everything should stay clean because we're using that cling wrap. But if you do get, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I ran into my light and my camera there. But if you do get any kind of mess on your things, just a little bit of rubbing alcohol will fix that and clean it right up. And just use a paper towel. Okay, so we're gonna take this off. So like here, I got a little bit squished out. So I'm just gonna wipe that off real quick. And then I'm gonna use a little spray of this rubbing alcohol to make sure it's nice and clean. And then we got a little bit here. Wipe that off. And move these guys out of the way. Try not to lose them. Because I'm going to want to use them again. Get down, Coco. I have a chair in my room that's right by the front door. So he's looking out to see if there's anyone that he can bark at. Okay, now if I can just find, there we go. I'm gonna open this up and just peel off your cling wrap and your die. And you have this really cool embossed image now and your glitter gel. Isn't that cool? I was so excited when I figured out how to do that. Because I kept thinking there's got to be a way I can emboss glitter gel. And I started playing and it will, it does work if you just use your metal die without the cling wrap, but it is very messy. So. <laughs> Then you have to wash everything. It probably voids the warranty in your die cutting machine. So I definitely recommend doing it this way with the cling wrap. And then what you can do is you can either, once this dries, run it through again so it'll cut out the full piece. And then you just have the flowers and you can put them on a card. Or you can do what I did, which was really fun. And I did two different versions. I'm just gonna show you one for now, because then I wanna show you the other one later. 
but I then took another panel and um, die cut out the image and then I just put cut out and put this image behind it and you can see it's totally dry this is just the green from playing but nothing's coming off it's very smooth but it just looks so pretty and you can pop this up with foam tape or EVA foam whatever you have and I'm going to show you that later so we have this one I love how those two colors came up mixed together isn't that pretty wow okay sorry I get I love the bling I love the glitter it's so fun it distracts me and makes me happy all right so for this the last thing I'm going to show you it's a lot of fun we are going to come in and we are going to start back with our colors here the sprout and the aqua sky and I am just going to quickly ink blend this panel. The nice thing about this technique I'm going to be showing you is that you do not have to have a very kind of perfect ink blended panel. It can be a little bit messy. It doesn't have to be blended super well. But I'm going to do this in thirds. And normally it would take a little bit longer to do because I would go in with a little bit of a lighter hand. But like I said, for this technique, it does not nearly, does not matter nearly as much. I'm gonna do blue on both sides. And then I'm gonna come in with green in the middle. Later today, I need to go and um, mail my Christmas cards. I did manage to get them all done, which is nice. Although I'm sure there's somebody I'm forgetting and I'll probably have to make more. All right, now I'm gonna come in with the sprout in the middle. put a piece of post-it tape on my fingers and that's so I can keep my fingers from getting too inky. Now if I was trying to make a really nice ink blended panel here what I would do is I would come in with a lighter hand and um, the key really to get a nice ink blended panel is to go back and forth between the colors several times. So I would have done like a light coat of the blue on both sides and a light coat of green and then another coat of the blue on both sides and then another coat of the green in the middle and it would give you a really nice blend. But I'm not worried about it. That is the extent of our ink blending folks because it is not gonna matter for this technique. All right, we're gonna set those aside. We are gonna come back in with our white glitz glitter gel. I'm gonna get my palette knife here. Dry it off. And I'm just going to give a nice kind of generous coating across the entirety of the image. And in fact, I am going to go ahead and get a piece of cling wrap first. And put that down so I don't have to worry about getting the glitter gel all over the place because I'm going to be doing the whole panel. Hopefully I made this piece big enough. I think I did. 
This probably would also work with press and seal. I don't know. Um, if you have that, you could try it. I first tried it with parchment paper and wax paper and um, it worked, but you have to move really quickly and some of the pieces get stuck and it's not nearly as clean. So I definitely recommend using the clean route. I think it does the best job. So I'm just going to kind of smear this all over. I want it to be kind of thin because I want you to, or I want to be able to see when I'm done the colors. Because this is semi translucent, it's not true translucent. I, well, I guess it is considered translucent because you can somewhat see through it, but not a ton. And you can see my white is a little old, so it is not nearly as um, easy to smooth anymore because it's so thick. But it actually ends up working really well for this technique that it is a little bit older. So we're gonna get this all kind of smooth down here. Is anybody doing anything fun this weekend? I think we're gonna decorate um, gingerbread houses this weekend. So that should be fun. And normally also, you probably wanna let your ink blended panel dry a little bit before you do this because you do run the risk of getting some of your ink on your palette knife into your jar of glitter gel if it picks up any of the ink. But again, we live dangerously on lives. They're fun though. I like lives. You guys need to be more chatty. I like talking to people. <laughs> okay, now we're just gonna, same thing. We are gonna fold over. I'm gonna move this slightly so I can get it all in there. We're gonna fold over and in fact, what you can do to kind of avoid any of it smushing out like it did on the last one is you can kind of fold the corners over once you get your die placed wherever you want it to be. And again, just using a little bit of purple tape to try and make sure this stays where I have it. I'm just gonna kind of fold these corners over a little bit to try and keep it all contained in there. Set this aside, I'm gonna come back in with my die cutting machine. And again, it is your die cut on the bottom followed by the paper followed by the squishy rubber band, followed by the embossing plate. And you just run it through slowly. got a little bit on our mat, but not bad. 
So I'm just gonna clean that off real quick. Grab a paper towel here. I could also actually just throw this in the soapy water if I wanted to, but since I was using it multiple times, I didn't want to do that. Set that guy aside. This is certainly not a um, clean technique. It's a bit of a messy technique. So if you don't like getting messy, probably not going to be the technique for you. But the outcome is just so fun. Like I haven't seen anything like it and it's really, really fun. And it looks very striking in person. Open this guy up now. Let's see if we can find the edge here. And again, you're just going to peel up. We lost a little tiny bit of our gel onto the cling wrap, so I'm just going to grab my palette knife and kind of bring that back over. I'm not sure why that's stuck. But it's okay. I won't even notice. But what you can see, and this will be far more prominent once it dries, you can see the beautiful embossed, there we go, flower image. And when this dries, it's really, really going to look pretty. I'm going to show you an example that I did last night that has dried now. Where I put a panel on top and popped it up with foam squares. I hope you guys can see that because it is really very striking in person. So you can see Right now it's kind of hard to see the colors, but once it dries and dries back, you see all of those beautiful ink blended colors underneath and having it peek through like this is a lot of fun. All right, does anybody have any questions about this technique? I think switch over here. Hi. Any questions anyone? Let me know down in the comments um, of the live if you're watching this on replay as well. I do try to check all my comments. I try to respond to all of them. Um, so definitely if you have a question or if you have a suggestion or whatever it may be, leave it down there in the comments for me. I'm just gonna have a drink of my lovely coffee. I don't know if you guys have ever seen these. They're ridiculously expensive, but my husband got me one for, um, I think it was my birthday last year, and it has a heater inside of it. So it keeps your coffee hot, which is really good when you're running around chasing after kids and stuff like that, because kids will um, drive you crazy. I want to show you guys real quick. We have now let this blue 
and green one dry for a little bit. And you can see it's fairly dry to the touch, but I wouldn't want to mess with it too much. But now you can really see as it's drying, you can see that image. And our other panel, the first panel we did, there that is, and it's, yeah, it's, it's essentially dry. So it dries pretty quick. Um, Mary was asking me earlier how long it takes to dry. It does dry pretty quick. Okay guys, well, I hope you um, enjoyed this. I hope you give this technique a try. I will post over at my Instagram, at dreamcraftcreate. I will post the finished cards once I'm done putting them together. So if you are not, um, if, if you don't follow me over on Instagram, definitely do that so you can see the finished product, which is always really fun. And if you haven't seen it, I am doing a really fun giveaway right now. I'm so excited. I reached recently 1,500 subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yay, you guys are awesome. Um, and so I have a giveaway going on right now over at my Instagram that you can enter if you are if you are a subscriber to my YouTube. You just head over there, follow me on Instagram, um, and leave a comment letting me know that you are subscribed over here. And I will do a random number generator on that is open until Sunday um, at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. So do head over there and do that. So I'm giving away a big box of goodies with some Tim Holtz Distress um, Oxides in it. Uh, it's got some um, Ranger, uh, what else is in there? Washi tapes, it's got a Simon Says Stamp Positively Everything tool. Um, it's got a, a pin from Simon Says Stamp. I don't know, a bunch of stuff. It's worth like over $50, whatever all is in there. So check that out uh, and good luck. And I will be back soon, hopefully on Tuesday. I'm trying to do Tuesdays and Fridays. That's what I've been fairly consistent with doing. It's a little tricky. Um, some of you know I have uh, three kiddos, so I'm kind of trying to plan around their school schedules and everything. But thanks, guys. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you again soon. Bye.